Hi, and welcome to the Dark Web Vlogs and the series on the CERN Scientist and the Vatican Project. They call me the ghost. I'm ex-CIA and now a dark operative on the dark web. And today is vlog number four, sharing with you my update of what's been happening on the job. And note, we're on the fourth vlog. So if you haven't watched from the beginning with the vlog titled, CERN Scientist Intentionally Goes Into Black Hole, take a listen now and catch up on the episodes so that you know what's going on. When this all started, my intention here was to send updates along the way. I wanted to give a better explanation and view into what goes on at CERN and how things work. But things happened here, unforeseen things that led to a change of plans. The last time I talked to you about this, I updated you on a few things. So let's recap the highlights quick. On top of energy traveling between dimensions, Chloe was expanding into soul research to help explain and solve the mystery of her hallucinations and visions and deja vus. She believes it all goes together and is the work of the natural universe constantly working to perfect itself. She believed her energy and soul came from her home dimension and was traveling to try to find her, home in on her like a magnet. But it was a conflict with her in the new world. She was starting to live out the results of transplanting. But even in her craziness, she wanted answers. And now it became more about if someone could even survive a permanent move to another dimension. And that was personal to her because obviously she had done that. As for work, Chloe was accepted into the Vatican Project as someone who could help study and monitor the people, you know, make sure there were no issues transplanting them into their new world. She had met with some of the equivalents who are the finished clones from the Vatican administration, and that project was getting more intense. Now, as for us, we were there to help figure out Chloe and if she was truly going insane and did she need help. She was slipping and almost with every day she was getting worse. And part of me started to kind of feel like it was because we were there too. I mean, we were a connection to her old world. And without going into what happened every single day, which would take about two weeks of vlogs, seriously. And honestly, it just got too busy every day to update you at the time. But anyway, let me sum it up for you here. I know a lot of you were concerned about Chloe, as were we. And I'd really not even like to relive this, but I do want you to know what happened. So let's start out actually with Lucas and Emma, her husband and her daughter. Lucas, her husband, was finally back with his wife, right? I mean, if you remember, that was our first job and he was thrilled. And their daughter was doing well. But when Chloe started to have her mental crossovers between her old and new dimension, things changed, it took a turn for the worst. Now their daughter, Emma, who was born there, so we weren't really worried about her, just like you wouldn't be worried about you slipping because you are in your intended dimension. But watching Chloe, Lucas started to worry for his family, you know, and for himself. I mean, was this a long-term side effect that would get to any and every transplant someday? Was he next? The fear was real. There was already so much going on. And since we had no preventative cure, if you will, you know, it wasn't something we could tackle at that moment. So while we all worked, Lucas actually took Emma and left the house. Chloe was unstable and we had no idea who exactly was poking around her world at the time either. So we all decided it was for the best. You know, they would assume life as normal somewhere else in another location, one, for their mental health, and two, just so as to not add to the mix of what was already a bad situation. So at least for a while, they took themselves out of the everyday mix so we could consider them safe and concentrate on Chloe. And Chloe was getting worse. You know, at work, she actually seemed okay for the most part, But it seemed more and more that when she was at home, she bounced mentally between realities and it was getting pretty bad. Each day we ended up, you know, we had to leave detailed instructions for her of what she had to do. And every night, every day and every night so that we didn't lose her altogether. You know, we didn't want her to float off into some other mental reality that we couldn't get her Mm -hmm. back. She would send reports back with bot to us, you know, our little electronic dimension traveling mobile computer that would carry communications and information back and forth between our dimensions. And some of you were actually asking, how come bot can go through so easily, but we cannot? And I'm gonna take a second here just to re-explain what is going on with this portal. 
between uh, our dimension here and the other side. Number one, if you miss the 12 hour window on the other side, you're simply stuck there. I mean, portals aren't perfect, guys. Portals to different areas act differently. And with this particular portal, and as far as they could take it, you only have a 12 hour window while on the other side. And if you miss that window to come back, you will not be able to be accepted back through that portal. This is why Chloe's stuck there. And we go back and forth every single day. Now, Bot is a machine. And everything is different for this small piece of equipment. I mean, bot is simply unaffected by the portal. The portal's unaffected by it. You know, does Nico or do we have all the answers to that? No, we don't. It's constant research. And I know that Nico has put a lot of work into trying to catch up to the other side, but we're just not there yet. We're a little step behind the other side where they seem to be able to move more freely with people and items in their portal to their new world. But we here... You know, we're stuck with what we've got and bot is only a start for us and we'll take it because it's working out great. So anyway, I hope that clears that up just a little bit. But okay, so Chloe was accepted into the Vatican project and was traveling between the other side and their new world. You know, they could basically walk through from their side to the Vatican's new world. But and actually, wait, that's not that didn't really come out right. You can't just walk up to it and walk through. It wasn't quite that easy. What would happen is the people on the side of the new world would actually have to send a host over to escort you back. And it was always an equivalent. They didn't quite trust the people for this yet. This is something that we have never tried in our world and something they had perfected. It helped them keep the clarity and pretty much stopped the invasion of unknown forces and made the transfer easier. There was always a connection while on the portal to both sides during the transport. And somehow that helped keep all the other things that can get in the way at bay. And again, Nico was learning from all of this, but our side still has some issues and we were still behind with regards to this. He was not confident that that particular technique would work in the portal we were using, the one he and Chloe created. You know, I mean, for us, we're still dealing with all the issues in that tunnel. Although our Snoopy caps have really helped a lot. We also started actually connecting to each other using a cord that strung us all together. And what it did is it gave us another point of focus while crossing. You know, the hallucinations and the threats to our sanity still came, but we had these resources now that helped us just keep our focus, stay grounded and stay connected to each other. And that all helped us make through without too many issues. I mean, they were still there, but it did get better. And then we have the Vatican Project. So let me remind you and let me fill you in on some things we found. Uh, We found that they now have five equivalents in the new world, and they are the Pope, two cardinals, and two bishops. And again, these are finished clones from their Vatican over to the new world that will act as they would in this new world, of course, under their direction. Once a week, the existing administration on the other side, where Chloe's living now, is escorted over to the new world, where they check in on the progress and status of all that's going on there. They have and they are migrating people to this new world, and they're doing it in waves to make sure that each wave assimilates okay. They've laid out the groundwork in the new world. You know, this world is not all built yet. They have built like the Vatican and a few other things, but it will be the people that really will build the world there. And they have phases for that too, with of course, all the necessities first. And you know, this sounds really difficult, but think about it though. It's not that difficult when you have your pre-programmed soldiers all ready to work. You know, you have an open portal where you can bring things back and forth. It's like expanding into a new suburb for these guys. It's completely crazy. And this new world was set to be perfect. And that meant no messy experiments, you know, no unknowns. They did not want this new world infected with any of the stuff they had going on in their old world. Any of that would just stay in the world that they came from. And then they had their experts on the project, and that included Chloe. And for the most part, she's able to maintain herself. And actually, when it first started out, she found that she even felt better in the new world than she did in her now second dimension. But then she started getting headaches over there, and they were worse than before. She wasn't having the memories or hallucinations. It was just these awful headaches. And this was the dimension travel. This was a result of that, and she was sure of that. And as for us... We, you know, had our feelers out. We were able to put together a few things to help get our heads around the situation. 
For instance, we found that the new world's inner mission is that it's a perfect world, right? A world with law-abiding citizens dedicated to one religion and world peace, okay? But they also wanted to use this new world to help provide for their own dimension. They want more money and power, which the people in the new world would be more than willing to give because remember, they now have those chips in their brains, as do the equivalents. Their personal thoughts, their feelings, their ideas are basically removed from the picture with these things. I mean, these guys, these new residents are going to work, live, and breathe support for their new Vatican and the powers that be. And then the new world would also serve as a backup. This is where the Vatican will run to should things get too off, too bad in their own world. The clones would simply go away. They'd be eliminated. And the real administration would then step in and leave their old world behind and be the kings of the land in the new world they created. It's a perfect setup for them. As for Chloe, we found proof that they are messing with her. We just couldn't figure out exactly how they were doing it. You know, how were they doing everything they were doing? We did find out why they were doing it, though. This was because Chloe, if you remember, voiced her opinions against this project. You know, if she were fascinated by it and inspired by it and motivated, none of what they were doing to her would be happening. But she didn't like the project. She said it would mess with and melt people's minds. It went against the Vatican, who should be looking for pure and good souls who see the light, love God, and things like that. Not people dumbed down and void of all personal thoughts and emotions that are being forced into the situation. So their end goal with Chloe will make sure she did lose her mind. Of course. I mean, whether anything was really happening to her or not, they didn't care. Then that way, when they were done with her, which actually looked to be very soon, they would just write her off as crazy, send her away, and no one would be the wiser. Because they saw her as a threat. I mean, she could spill about the Vatican Project and the risks and the dangers that came with it. And they didn't want any of it. They didn't want any of those truths out there for anyone to know or realize. So this thing was a total mess, basically. Something that took a lot of days and work to fully realize. I mean, we are now way beyond studying the dimensional effects on someone who transplants, which is a very real thing. We have another world with an entirely different set of beliefs than our own, other minds, other thinking. And while we're in all of this, I mean, we needed to get back to our reality, you know, mentally. We know that we don't belong there, and neither does Chloe. And at this point, it's really just a matter of safety for Chloe, who is the reason we're there in the first place. And right now, we're in a world where there is complete chaos going on. But it's a different world, you know. What might seem crazy or chaotic to us makes perfect sense to them. We need to stay focused and know that this is not our world. It's not just a mirror of who we are. It is a different place altogether. And for us, it's a dangerous place with dangerous people in it. And we need an exit plan. And, you know, sure, me and my team, you know, we could make it out easy. Just get out and go home and never look back. But that would be the wrong thing to do. We are now involved. We're engaged. This is a part of us, and it would be completely irresponsible to just walk away. We all agree that we will not do that. We just need to shift our focus to a new direction. And let me remind you, it was me, Scarlett, Frankie, and Ryder on the other side. We get back, and we're met by Nico and Jagger. They're at CERN in Switzerland. And then, of course, we have Harley, who stayed back in the United States at our office in the warehouse to be our contact and manager on the ground there. So anyway, we get back to our own dimension. We're at Chloe's old house where Nico lives now, and we try to regroup. Let's say we can get Chloe to a safe place. The question became for us, probably is for you, does how they are messing with her even matter then? Who cares what they're doing? Just get Chloe out of the mess and be done with it. But it does matter because we need to find the connection between here and there and make sure it's closed so that we, you know, we don't want to have their crazy in our world. And we know they've been here. They don't know that we are there yet, though. So we have that on our side. We are still Chloe's secret weapon, and we're going to do what we can. So anyway, we returned on a Friday night, and it's not long before I'm in the basement printing things out and I'm laying things out. I mean, I'm going mad over this. What am I missing? My team slowly starts to join me, and Ryder comes down first, and she starts pulling things out and looking it over as well. 
What I do start to notice is a trend in my reporting. On the days that Chloe had an incident with someone messing with her, I see these interruptions. Interruptions in the communications of the top guys and certain guys on the main team. These are not times of portal travel, which also causes interruptions because obviously they're traveling. So what are they? I mean, these are busy people. Their activities don't just shut down for no reason. With my whole team downstairs now, I start showing them what I found. But Ryder doesn't come over. She's over at the ping pong table with some papers spread out and her laptop going. I mean, she's busy and I can see that. But she also looks distracted in an odd way. So I motion to Frankie and we walk over where she is. She also has some data maps out and things and she appears to be resetting some of our feelers, which is routine. But the problem is she's resetting them to coordinates from a few days ago. And she's really into it. She doesn't look up. She doesn't stop what she's doing when we go over there. So there's a little concern around this right now. We ask her what she's doing. She looks up and you can see something in her eyes. She actually jumps back a bit as if she's surprised to see us or she doesn't know where she is. And sure enough, she thought she was at CERN. Not the CERN in our dimension, the CERN on the other side. So this isn't good. I mean, granted, Ryder's been working down with Chloe, well, in her area since we started. She's been the data queen. But, you know, maybe it's been too much. Going back and forth, you know, almost every single day maybe has its own effects. We're going to have to ask Chloe if she thinks this could happen. I mean, we're not transplants, and that's where our focus has been. We pull Ryder from her work, explain to her where she is. She seems to realize it, but there's still more confusion. Then she starts to complain of a headache, you know, a bad one. This is sounding all too familiar, and I don't like it. Frankie, Scarlett, and I, you know, we're feeling nothing. And up until a day ago, nothing for Ryder either. I mean, did something happen that day, which again was a Friday, or could it be that there were just no warning signs? But even Chloe seemed to have those. We lead Ryder to the room that she's staying in, and we get her to lay down, and she knocks right out. I mean, she does not get up again. The girl is out, and she just stays that way. Now, I realize that this could just be the Chloe effect, but in my gut, I just don't think so. It came on way too fast. The next morning, Nico and Jagger had discern, and the rest of us continue our work at the house. And when they come home that night, a lot happens. And in the meantime, Ryder did stumble her way out of the bedroom and try to get involved in what we were doing, but it was still kind of a rough day. Anyway, when Nico gets home, I show him my findings, and he also has some new information. Chloe sent him a feed, and it's data from her trips to the New World. She tells him to look at the energy bursts and claims that there's something wrong. While in the New World to study the people, she was able to slip in some other monitoring. According to those in charge, and like I told you earlier, they're not to be working on experiments in this New World. That's what they supposedly agreed on. I mean, they didn't want to mess it up with anything, you know, having to do with molecules and possible big bangs and black holes and things like that. That's what they said. But according to Chloe, this isn't true. Her monitors in the new world started spitting out information that she says can't be anything but, you know, a black hole or portal of some kind. So a portal from the new world? Where would it even go and why would they need it? Well, Nico translates Chloe's report and he agrees they have built a portal in the new world with their latest and greatest technologies. The energy burst can't be mistaken for anything else. And he points them all out to me. And once you see him, he's right. You really can't miss him. And we sit, all of us, placing each energy burst against the data glitches, and they all match up. It looks like our guys on the other side were going to their new world and playing with portals. Then Nico breaks out another set of papers that he has rolled up in a tube, and we lay those out as well, and they show some bursts. Now, I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at yet, but he does explain it quickly. And I don't know if you remember Nico's energy level, but he's getting more wound up by the minute. I mean, he's an animated guy when he's not all strung out. And he's extremely excited about what he has to share with us. The papers he unrolled for us had data on them that he pulled after reviewing what Chloe sent over. He says Chloe must have known and sent her stuff so that Nico would know exactly what he should do. And the data he pulled was from our CERN, okay? And he says it's someone at our CERN is working with the other side. They know about Chloe. And they're partnering with the other side in some way against her and what she's doing. So, I mean, come on, guys. We've got Chloe experiencing some sort of dimensional effects. And this is real stuff. This is stuff we're studying. 
We've got the other side and that Vatican building a new and fresh world that they can rule. We have clones, worker bees, people volunteering to live in a matrix bliss, void of all individuality. And then we know that Chloe was being messed with for her opinions against the Vatican project. And now we find out that our CERN, the CERN that she was loyal to and helped to learn and discover so much, was messing with her too. I mean, it's all just too much. So much corruption, it seems no one is immune to the test of greed. When one person gets wind of something, they can be paid off, given things, and schmoozed to keep their mouth shut. You just need to give them a piece of the pie. And it looks like our pie is getting bigger. And I have had enough. Okay, so at this point, guys, I don't care what they're doing. I want to find that new world portal. I ask Nico how we can do this. And if we find it, is there anything it could possibly do for us? Or do I just need to blow it to bits? To my happy surprise, Nico tells me he thinks... We would have to check with Chloe if she can stay clear enough, but he thinks that if we can find this portal that we could maybe use it if we want to get Chloe out. Now this is something new. Getting Chloe safe and helping her figure out her issues while trying to stay grounded is one thing, and already a challenge, but getting Chloe out? First off, would she come? Secondly, would another transport take her down completely? These are questions to which there are no answers, not right now. All I know is that I am starting to steam. I mean, who in this CERN is messing with Chloe and how things are? I want to find out. While we're talking about this and getting all anxious to go back to the other side, we're contacted by Harley, out of the blue, and it couldn't have been better timing. We bring her up on the laptop, and she has a report for us. The blood work came back on Chloe, and she said it's not awesome. She tells us they found traces of antipsychotics in her blood. Well, Chloe isn't on any medication. She wanted to experience this all as someone unaffected by anything else so that she could get true results on how she felt and what would happen. Well, if something this strong, you know, is taken by someone without, say, you know, real schizophrenia or something like that, it can actually cause the symptoms that they're meant to help with, like depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety. I mean, the person can become agitated, feel manic, get insomnia, poor cognition, even have hallucinations. These are all part of Chloe's exaggerated symptoms. This is all we need to hear. And when we go back, we're testing everything at that CERN. Long story short, we find that someone has been slipping drugs to Chloe at different times through the coffee that she drinks. It was ground up and mixed right into the coffee grounds that get delivered to her office. So little did she know, she was mixing up her own little cocktails on the job, usually at the end of the day when she was putting in those last couple of hours. And that explained a lot. She would be a mess by the time she got home. And sure enough, also, when we got to the bottom of that, we realized that Ryder made coffee that last day. And Ryder, unlike me, is not a huge coffee drinker, but she drank it that day. Just random. But that explains why she, too, became a mess. Frank and I only drink it at home and in the morning. And Jagger, well, he doesn't drink caffeine, period. So we three got out lucky. We had Chloe continue to make her coffee in her office, though, but now she'd just dump it out instead of drink it. We wanted to help clear what we could of her mind, but keep those dishing it out to her in the dark. Scarlet's still at her job there, so we had her do some snooping around, and I redirected my crawler to give me new alerts. Anytime Chloe's name was mentioned, it would record the update. And through all of that, we realized that they were not only using Chloe for what she could bring to the table, they were using her as a baseline. They were trying to learn all about her so that they would know what to look for in the new world with the people there when Chloe was long gone. If someone started to experience her symptoms as a transplant, they were creating the plan to have them removed from the new world. So they're trying to prepare for this stuff, but according to Chloe, it wouldn't happen like that to them anyway. Because all the people over there, okay, their emotions were blocked. There would be no new emotions or thoughts to rise to the surface, new energies or not. These people were numb. What she told us, though, is that should these people ever wake up or be brought out of the state they were in, they could experience a psychotic break. I mean, should someone pull them out or if, for some reason, there was a problem with that portal or any source of energy in the new world, you know, anything connecting to or having anything to do with controlling those little brain chimp implants. The people were at risk. They were at risk of being let go all at once. 
They'd be set free and be hit with everything at one time and go crazy all at the same time. Another reason this whole project was undoable in her eyes. Human error, any technical issues, and the entire planet as they populated it would go insane at one time. She did try to bring this up to the Vatican administration, but the Pope would have nothing to do with it. She was shut down immediately, and she was forced to commit to silence. The cloned administration could never know or realize this possibility, and neither could any of the New World residents. They were to have no doubts in the New World that they lived in. In the state they were in, they were in programmed bliss, and would never be able to come up with any thoughts like that on their own, and only would have them if they were infected, as the Pope called it, like if Chloe talked. That's exactly what would happen. Well, Chloe obliged only playing along, of course, but I mean, this was huge. The entire planet was in danger, and a bigger danger the farther along that it got, I mean. And you know, sometimes you guys want to know of jobs that didn't work out as they should. Well, this was one of those jobs. I mean, with all that was already going on, and now with all of this, we were headed, you know, and like I said earlier, in the direction of having this entire original mission being abandoned. We were still there to save Chloe in any way that we could. It's just that how we would go about that was all different now. And it all came down to Nico's option. Find the portal in the new world and get Chloe through it. If she stayed on the other side, she would most likely go insane over time. You know, it's pretty much inevitable with how she was affected by this whole move in the first place. That was a very real thing. She could not come back the way she came. But this portal they found in the new world, that was new and from a new place. Now, Nico didn't know its sensitivities, you know, like how ours wouldn't accept you back after 12 hours. And we should consider this a one-way trip. I mean, and who knows what the future could bring exactly, but she needed to know that that was how it was for now and maybe forever. This should be the only way to see it. So two challenges here. Relay all this information to Chloe and find out what she wanted to do. She was running out of time, and that was a fact we knew. The Vatican on the other side was almost done with her. I mean, before she might even slip into craziness on her own, the Vatican could take her down, lock her away, and throw away the key. If she wanted to stay on the other side, I mean, Lucas was there. Her daughter, Emma, was there. She was signing off on probable doom. But in the end, it was her choice. If she wanted to return, it very well could be, and most likely would be, permanent. So this was our next step. We needed to get back to the other side the next day and present these options to Chloe, and that's what we did. We met her at her house in the morning, like always. We sent Scarlett on to go to her job at CERN so that she could try to be, you know, our eyes and ears over there. And we kept Chloe at home, having her call in for the day. She called in sick, which should not throw up too many red flags, right, since they knew they were the ones making her sick. So Scarlett's out the door, and we all make some coffee, clean coffee, and we go out to her back deck area. This is the same deck area that we arrived at that very first day when our job was to bring her husband, Lucas, to her. I'll never forget standing there in the grass, watching her, letting out her dog early that morning and having a smoke. She had no idea what all would happen after that quiet morning. Neither did we, really. But she did seem content then. And now, she was anything but that. So anyway, there we were again, on that back deck, sitting on the same chairs that were there years earlier. And she knows we need to talk serious. She lights up her smoke. She's anxious, but she's trying to be patient. And she sits down and she listens intently, while we tell her what we know. When we're done talking about the options, she puts out her smoke, stands up, and lights another one. It starts to pace, slowly. She's asking about Lucas, and what about her daughter, Emma? But we can't answer these for her. This is a choice only she can make. You know, maybe her and Lucas need to make it together. She knows this. She asks to be alone so she can think. You know, she's got CERN drugging her, CERN messing with her. She's worked there to help make a better future. She feels betrayed. The Vatican on the other side. The messed up concept of the cloned Vatican. I mean, it's overwhelming. She also needs to think about herself, you know, her health and her family. So she goes in and up to her room so that she can be alone. And, you know, well, we don't really know what to do at this point. It's me and Frankie now, and all we can do is wait. There's no reason for us to go to CERN at that time, and we can't head back without Scarlet. So really, we just have to wait. Around lunchtime, though, Lucas comes home. And you can see he has tears in his eyes. He's not bawling or anything, but he has his daughter with him. He acknowledges us and then excuses the two of them, and they also go upstairs. And before we know it, Scarlett's back, and we just have to leave. 
We leave a note for Chloe because they're all still upstairs when we go and we tell her that we'll be back. We tell her to take her time in making her decision. And should she want to go, we need to find that portal. That night, well, late evening, we're all at our CERN with Nico talking about what's going on and how big this all is when that big bank vault door lights up again and it's bought. His message this time tells us that Chloe is considering coming back and that she's going to the new world the next day and for us not to come, not to come over until we hear from her again. She says she will cover for Scarlet so as not to raise flags there and that she has work to do. She says she wants to scope out where the new portal is and see what the possibilities are, and she's determined to find it. And, you know, we're hoping that she does, because we also want to know the possibilities. I mean, how does this portal even work, for one thing? Because they're all different. They all have their own little quirks. Where is this portal, and where does it supposedly go? We also feel a small bit of sadness. You know, what will Lucas do? Will he want to come with? Will he stay and then start having crossovers like Chloe? Does he want to risk it? I mean, Emma's from there, and we're pretty sure that Chloe's not even going to allow her to transplant, not after what she's been through. Well, within three days, Chloe's found the portal. She still is having major crossovers and feeling the impacts, you know, of her old and new energy, but without the unwanted drugs, she's at least able to work through them. I mean, that said, the hits are getting stronger and she's feeling weaker. And when we get to her, I can see that, yes, she is weaker. We meet her at her house, like always. She just looks so tired. She's lost some weight. She's ready to present her final decision. And Lucas is there too, showing his support. You can see the pain and sorrow on his face though. And this tells me that he's staying. And then she gives it up. She does want to go back with us. She spent some time sneaking off from her real mission in the new world. And she played detective until she found out where this portal is. And as if having the portal there in the first place wasn't news enough, where it is stops us all in our tracks. She tells us it's underneath the new Vatican there. I mean, our mouths just drop open, but I have to take a breath and I just have to know that yes, this is a problem, but all our jobs have problems. So trying not to stress over this in advance. Either way, we just got a lot of news. I mean, Chloe's leaving and our challenge to get her out of there is bigger than we would have imagined. Now we need to go over the details of what she found in her research about this new portal under the Vatican Chloe, Jagger, and I actually head over to CERN and send what we can to Nico so that he can start to review it all before we get back. So first things first, and she sends the information over with Bot. Then she gathers up anything and everything that she has, and we head back to the house. Jagger stays at CERN just in case Nico sends anything back, and he'll wait a few hours, and then he'll come and join us. But we go over all of Chloe's information. I mean, we go over it, and we go over it again. By the time we all have a good understanding of the situation, Jagger's back and we need to go. You know, we have our 12 hours. We leave with the plan. The final decision is that we will be back and that we will head to the Vatican somehow. And we will all exit through that portal. The details, the how-tos around all of that have to get figured out and we will try to do that back home. So we take all the information and we head back. And when we do get back, there's no rest for the weary. I mean, it's a keep going situation. For hours, we're looking at Chloe's maps, the layout of the Vatican, which is not like our Vatican, by the way. It's fancier. You know, it's better than the utilitarian look that seems to be everywhere on the other side. But I mean, it's nice. It just doesn't look anything like the Vatican that we know. Nothing like something that was built in the past. The building's white and they have these large blue and white tiles and planters on the exterior stone walls. There's this beautiful big fountain out front. I mean, this place looks Catholic, but it's just strange, you know, that we have our Vatican that we know. And now we basically have this Vatican, which apparently was the Vatican's dream Vatican. I mean, they could have built it any way they wanted to. And this is what we got. But it really did look nice. The front of the Vatican has a monumental circular space, kind of like our Vatican now. It has two grottos, statues of St. Peter and St. Paul. Very beautiful. But, you know, we're only going to see this thing once, you know, so we're not trying to get too attached. I'm interested on how we get in and how we get to the portal. And, I mean, Chloe did a great job while she was in the new world, finding all this information. We even have the floor plan for this new Vatican. And apparently directly underneath the fountain that's out front is where our portal is. So we have to get into that church. Scarlet was also a help. 
while she was on her job, she was able to hack into the system and get the schematics for this new portal. It was pretty amazing. It was mostly gibberish to her, but she brought everything back for Nico, and he spent hours analyzing it. This whole thing would be a risk. I mean, he has not tested it for himself. However, we know that someone is going back and forth through this portal. And in the end, it's decided that Nico is actually going to have to travel with us. We will hack into this new portal programming, and he will do his best to reroute it. While he's in there also, he should be able to determine, we were hoping that he can, where this portal leads to on the other side. That way he can shut it down also. And so it's set. We have the information on the Vatican, and we're taking Nico with us. And so it's going to be me, Nico, and Frankie that will return the next day. And we get there in the evening, around 11 p.m., so that we can do our work at night. And when we arrive, we're off and running. We learn after getting there that it's only a matter of time before the Vatican plans their big takedown of Chloe. So we can't waste any time. Both Lucas and Emma are also there when we show up, and it's a very sad goodbye. I mean, tears are flowing everywhere. It was a mess. But Chloe has her mind set that this is the best choice because, in her mind, if she can return to her own dimension and get her sanity back, maybe she'll be able to fix this. You know, somehow she would like to be reunited with her family once and for all, you know, for good. So with that, we're all off. We're heading to CERN with Nico, and then Chloe, Frankie, and I will head to the new world. Nico's planning on returning from that CERN back to our dimension. And then when we get to the new world, though, we are going to head to the Vatican, get to that portal, and then hopefully get us and Chloe home. Okay, so first things first. And at the CERN on the other side, Nico gets to work. And now remember, all we know right now is that we have our 12 hours to return. That's how it's been for us. That's the rule from the other side. But we have no idea what it is from the new world and our hearts are racing. I mean, Nico's working as fast as he can and he does what he can. But unfortunately, he can't finish the job. He won't be able to return from our regular portal back to our dimension like he was hoping and planning. You know, we hoped he could get things set and then get back safely while we went on with Chloe to get her out from the new world. But now he's going to have to come with us for the long haul. As he says, he has things that he has to do on site in order to finish the job. So we move fast and we leave there and we head for the portal to the new world. And when we get to that opening, as Chloe warned us, there are guards there. Now, if you remember, when we brought a bunch of our stuff over to the other side, I believe I talked about it in episode two, one of the things we brought were our pulse guns. And these guns admit an energy that will take anyone, and at times we found anything, down. Frankie has a couple of those, and I have one. And so while Chloe's talking like a crazy person to the main guard, which, I mean, let's face it, it's not that hard for her right now, Frankie walks up, you know, as if he's going to remove her. But then he gets the guy. And then when the other two guards walk up, Frankie gets one, and I put my gun on the other. We need him right now as our escort. We force him to take us through to the other side. And when he does and we're done, we get him as well. And you know, these guns are great. You know, you don't need to be particularly close. And once the energy bubble surrounds the target, it just consumes them. We're not sure how long these guys will be out, though, because we never can be sure when we're dealing with something new. But typically... We just would have bought ourselves at least a couple of hours. Either way, we need to hurry, though. And next up is the church in the new world where we proceed to break in to one of the back doors. And when we get inside, you know, this place is cool. They have some fake candles and they have low lighting. And you can see they have a mural up top in this big dome. But, you know, it's not old paintings or angels or anything like that like we're used to. It's more Pope-oriented. You know, he's painted there, and there's sort of this flock of people behind him, from what we can tell. I mean, it looks more like the worship of a Pope than anything God or religious. But again, you know, we're not looking too closely. We're not there to stay. It really doesn't concern us. But it was interesting to take a look at. Anyway, before we get into the main church area, we see another guard. And this one's sitting on the last row of pews in that church area. And we need to get him before he notices us. So... I break out some of my aromatherapy that I like to have handy. Uh, And very quietly, Frankie and I walk up behind this guy, and then Frankie grabs his head and neck, holds him still, startling the guy. And I simply pass my little bottle back and forth under his nose. It's full of a sleep agent. 
And that's exactly what he does. He falls asleep fairly quickly. And again, this should buy us some time. But we're in a new world. You know, you never know what you're going to get. But he's out for now, so we just keep on going. From Chloe's diagram, and she's with us, so she can help us, of course. You know, she's a little bit out of it, but she's still there. It looks like there's an underground tunnel, and it looks like it starts underneath the large pulpit that's there. So we start to kind of feel around and poke around that a bit. We don't find anything at first, but then we do find this small lever on the right side, hidden sort of underneath the top piece that holds, you know, the Bible and things. And Nico, Chloe, and I step back while Frankie pulls it. And when he does that, the bottom of the pulpit drops open and we all climb down into it. You know, it's a little bit of a squeeze, but I have to hand it to them. It was hidden very well. And we get down there and it's all brushed iron, brushed iron walls, floor, ceiling, and it's just a hallway. It goes for a little bit. I mean, well, as long as it would take to walk outside to the fountain. So it's a little ways. And when we get to the end, there's this steel door. And on the steel door is this giant circular combination lock. Looked very intimidating, but Nico came prepared, and I was actually pretty impressed. And we had some break-in tools also. And between the two of us, Nico and I used a couple of drills, the use of some mirrors and things, to crack the combination. And it took a while, which sometimes is fine, but again, our time is slipping by, and we don't even know if our time is up in this world. So we just stay concentrated, and we just keep moving. And when we get the door open, though, you know, Nico and I were working on the lock and Frankie was holding up the lighting. That's when we notice Chloe. I mean, she's not doing well. She's on the floor. She's almost foaming at the mouth. She was doing pretty good before. Not feeling great, but, you know, her excitement at being close to relief was there. It was her motivator. And now she seemed to have even lost that. Frankie, Nico, and I do a check of ourselves and we agree that we too are feeling a bit lightheaded, but not at all how, you know, Chloe looks. We just crossed over another dimension deep, and this can't be good, and we need to hurry. But Chloe can't even get up. She can't move. She's getting the words out for us to keep moving, but that's about it. I mean, she has tears coming out of her eyes. Who could even know what she was feeling inside? She has to be a mess in all ways. We have no choice but to carry her, and Frankie takes that on. He picks her up, we open the heavy door, and we walk through. And this next part of the hallway is a dark place. You know, the first part had these little small backup looking lights, but in this part, the tunnel has nothing. There's, you know, nothing there, but there has to be power somewhere. So we take some time and we eventually find it. But again, that's more time slipping by. You know, our wrist computers aren't working. There's nothing. So we don't even know how long we've been down there. I'd say it was stressful, but it was so stressful that it's hard to even explain here. Anyway, we keep going, and at the end of this hallway, we get to these two rooms. So basically, the end of the hall splits off into these two areas. And on the left are computers and tables and things, and on the right is what looks like this giant pod. And Nico tells us that that's it. That is where we are going. And we're all looking at it, but it's not really making sense. I mean, normally, when we have gone through portals, and I have to say, we have more experience, you know, than the average person, right? Anyway, when we go through portals... Usually there's some sort of pathway or tunnel or something like that. We even had the one that shot us through water, but this one was different. It doesn't look like we would walk anywhere. I mean, granted, the pod is giant. I mean, you could fit probably 10 people in this thing, but what does it do? Well, Nico explains that this is where some of the advanced programming from the other side comes into play. You know, you always want to set your coordinates, but this portal was different. It was almost set up like a time machine. And if he can get it set correctly, it will transport us through space and time, basically, to the portal tunnel that we have back home. And he explains that we need to be prepared to be extremely disoriented. And he also is very worried about Chloe, who's already on the edge. But it's the only way. I mean, we have one last chance to turn around and stop this project or try to find a different way. We all look at each other and we're sitting for a small second and Chloe's no help, right? Because she's just sitting there drooling on herself. But while we're in our small moment of silence, we hear a noise. There is someone up above. And if they see we've opened that hatch from the pulpit, they're going to know someone's down here. So this forces us into a quick decision. And it's the one that we wanted all along. We want to go for it. So Nico gets to work on the computers. He has notes and things set up that he's laid out for himself. And he's following them step by step. 
And as he's going, the level of urgency goes up a few notches almost every second. You know, we start hearing someone play with the hatch above. Well, I go down the hall and I close that big door and spin the combination so that if they do head this way, at least maybe it could buy us a minute or two. And right when I get back from doing that, we hear some yelling. You know, is it the guards? Did they wake up? We have no idea who it is, but it would appear that someone knows that someone's here and they're coming. So I've never seen uh, Nico type this fast, but he tells us, you know, he's doing his thing and he tells us that we need to get into this pod in this little room. And so we do what we're told. You know, Chloe can't really walk at this point. So Frankie's still carrying her. and He sets her down inside. I run back quick to see what Nico's doing. And he tells me that once he hits the final button, we have about 30 seconds until transport. So he types in a few more things and then he looks at me. It was one of the most intense moments I've had on a job. I mean, this was do or die. There was no time left. There were no other decisions to be made. There were no other options to look at. This was it. And he slams down on his, you know, final button, the go button, scoops up all of his papers, and he and I run over to the giant pod, which it's all lit up now on the inside. And right before we're both all the way in with Frankie and Chloe, we hear someone messing with that big combination lock down the hall. I mean, they were right there. We slam the pod door shut and spin the lock, and then we hear this big vacuum sound, not even 30 seconds later. I kneel down by Chloe, and Frankie's already down by her, and I look to her, and I put my hand on her shoulder, and she's looking up at me, you know, her eyes are red, the tears are flowing, and I can see that she's trying to say something, but now nothing's coming out. I look up to Nico, and he's standing there, and he's just frantic. I mean, he's got papers in his hands, and he's basically just frozen. Well, the vacuum sound gets louder, and then there's this large boom. It was so loud that, you know, I put my head down, I cover my ears, I close my eyes. And then all of a sudden, it went silent. And when I look up again, it's dark. You know, I feel around, Chloe's still in front of me, and I know it's Chloe, but I forgot why she's there. Why am I there in the dark? Where am I in the first place? I mean, for that moment, I honestly didn't know. But then Frankie flips on his headlamp It starts to kind of slowly come back to me. I can see that we are in our old portal tunnel. You know, did we make it? Well, Nico says, we have to move. We're not done yet. That that other portal was not meant to transfer here and it may not hold. So we all get up. We pick up Chloe off the floor. She's completely passed out now. I mean, she's not even looking around. And we go forward. You know, we have no gear. We don't have our caps. We don't have our cords. We're on our own. I'm seeing different things in front of me that I know aren't there, but I'm still dodging them as a reflex. I'm trying to stay focused. Frankie has his hands over his ears, and Nico is basically running in front of us. I mean, I see he looks back a few times. In his mind, he's being chased by something. The whole thing was a horrible experience. But we do finally get to the one chamber that's just before we get back to our CERN. But, you know, we have no suits. There's no anything. We don't need to have anything decompress or... There's really nothing to do in there but take a minute to rest. And after that, we have our blue lit walkway. And then Jagger is on the other side of the final door to let us in. What a relief. We basically fall through that door and into Nico's lap. For a few minutes, I'm not even sure that we're really there. I slump down onto the floor. And Jagger walks up to me and leans down and starts shaking my shoulders a bit to help me snap out of it. And I realize, you know, finally that it's him... I'm exhausted. I see that Chloe's laying on the floor and I actually crawl over to her and lay next to her. For the next 10 minutes or so, we're all on the floor. Me, Frankie, Chloe, and Nico. And Nico still has a death grip on his papers, which is interesting. But after a small bit, little by little, we all start to come to. I mean, none of us were right that day. Chloe actually needed medical attention and we call on Scarlett and Ryder to come to CERN to help us take care of Chloe and get her where she needs to go. Nico has the information on special doctors that, you know, Chloe was known to work with before she even left. So this is where she's going to start out. Nico and I try to get it together and we sort through his notes and work to find the existing portal that someone was using to travel from the new world to our world in. We basically spend that night and a good part of the next day tracking this thing down, closing down the portal that we have used many times to get to the other side. Nico bugged that portal. 
it's many levels deep and no one could really ever find it unless they worked very, very hard. But for all intents and purposes, this thing is shut down. And for the record at CERN, he's going to mark it as closed. He will then open up new research projects, you know, to help take the attention off of this portal. Anyway, we find that there's another lab just below Nico's where more secret ops were going on. And basically, guys, Nico and I sabotage this portal, but not before we realize who's coming through. I mean, of course, after the Vatican administration on the other side realized that someone had broken in, they would send someone over. And when they do, Nico's there waiting for them, and Frankie and I are standing by as well. We find it to be a man that Nico's worked with several times before. And so they have these, a few, I should say, angry exchanges. I mean, Nico's looking for answers, and the man is just maintaining his evil excuses. You know, we get nowhere. This man is just a flat-out traitor. And this one's Nico's. You know, Frankie and I follow his lead, and we block the man from fully entering back into our world. And instead, he's greeted at the door with one final lecture by Nico on the trouble he's caused, the life changes he has made for others, And Frankie's there too, and basically this man, this very smart scientist, never gets past the doorway. Instead, the doorway's shut on him, and the portal is set to suck him back, back into the messed up world of crazies in the making that he helped create. I mean, should he not make it back, he'll be stuck in that portal forever, so that's also an option. You know, like that other scientist that got stuck in the portal we used. Pure hell. Nico then proceeds to literally rip this portal apart. I mean, he is angry. He's having, you know, a little fit about it. You know, rightfully so. He's pulling wires out of machines to the side. He's smashing the computer that controls it. And Frankie and I just stand by and let him have it. You know, so things are chaotic now, but we are all back. And thank goodness we have Jagger and Scarlet and Ryder who are grounded and in our home dimension. And they help us get through the next few days. We are in and out in a way. The other side still haunts us as a reality that we've lived in almost every day for a while now. And the travel to the new world, it added to some of the effects that we felt. I mean, it only touched on us. You know, for Chloe, it was clearly too much. We don't leave Switzerland and we stay in Chloe's house for a little while until everything calms down and we can all get our bearings. And we also want to make sure if we can that Chloe's not permanently damaged. When she comes to, she will be devastated, and we want to be there for support for her. She traveled to another dimension only to find her daughter. Then her husband traveled to find her. They were all together. Now she's had to leave them both behind and is back where she started alone. And remember now, all of this is going on during the time that I was going to update you guys daily. And as you can see, things got very out of control and quickly. There was no time for any of that. I mean, Chloe didn't come out of her care for weeks. And even today, she's still not quite right, although she's working very hard to get right. When she first thought of coming back, she thought she would try very hard to get back to CERN, you know. But she's since had a change of mind. Nico will stay at her house, and so will she. And in her basement, she's transforming it into a working lab as we speak. Nico will stay at CERN, however. You know, he's going to be a connection there. I mean, there's still so much to do here. I'm pretty sure you can see that. I I don't believe this job is done. I don't believe that Chloe or Nico will be done until her family situation is resolved. And now with Nico also being burned by the people he trusted, he has changed as well. Opening portals to new places and trying to discover the possibilities is one thing, but there will always be people trying to use it for bad and ugly things. The other side can't get to us for now, although they are way more advanced than us, and we would be fools to think they wouldn't try and in fact make it someday. Once you get moving through portals and you realize dimension possibilities, planet, worlds, dimensions, they simply become almost like other cities or something. If it's possible, they want it. They want all the power and control and benefits that come with it. But like I said, I can't see this being the end to anything, but at least getting Chloe back gives her a start to maybe finding a resolution for all of this. Staying on the other side would have done her no good, And as for me and my team, we needed to eventually get home and get back to other business, each of us knowing that it's very likely that we will hear from them again. They need to get everything figured out, though, work together, make progress, and figure out what they can even do about any of it. And so until if and when we hear from them again, me and my team, we head back home and we get back at it. 
even after we're back home, you know, at our home base, even chatting in the warehouse, we're a bit slow moving. You know, we don't dive into the next job right away. We're sort of silently spending time organizing, doing some administrative things, stuff like that. We just laid low for a few days. Then, of course, we did get back in. There were more adventures to go on. There were more problems to be solved. There was more greed to fill. The jobs are always out there. And once we were ready, we got out there and we grabbed the next one. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. Again, and as always, thank you so much for listening. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because then you'll know when I post next. So until next time, and I will talk to you soon.